Look, Dewan Jones, I think he's at a crossroads now. Like, he went in the fourth round. We were talking about a guy who could, maybe should have gone in the first round based off his tape, based off how he dominated the first day at the Senior Bowl. But you have all the stuff Chris was talking about, I think, on our show first and then the day one of the draft show where he's saying, look, he turned a lot of people off in the NFL with his attitude, with the way he bailed on the Senior Bowl after one good day of practice, essentially, like in cricket. Like, I just declared on that score and then not going to risk making it worse over the next few days than how he handled his pro day. Um, There was a report out yesterday that he he was telling people the NBA was his first love. You know, my dream is to play in the NBA as the, you know, as the NFL people are wanting to hear nothing other than how much you love football and all that kind of stuff. I don't really care about that, but when you, it's ridiculous, right? But when you add that to all the other stuff that like Chris was saying that he'd never heard like the venom that was being used by these NFL personnel guys to describe the attitude presented by Dewan Jones, right? The point being, whatever this is, the totality of what's happened, it's potentially cost him three rounds worth of draft position, which comes with it, three rounds worth of investment and buy-in from the team that's taking you. So Dewan Jones is now at this crossroads where either he like buckles down and gets his shit together and is like, oh, I can't, I, I got to prove it now. I got chip on the shoulder. I got to show that I'm a first round guy. I've got to get my career together because I almost cost myself the whole opportunity. Or we're on like a fast track pathway to Isaiah Wilson, to Aaron Gibson in his way out of the NFL. Like, I think that's, that's where we are right now. And he goes one of two directions. It's a great place to take that, take that risk. Yeah, absolutely. The fourth round, round, 100%. I mean, genuinely, I think that guy has first-round talent. I think he could be the second-best tackle in this draft. It wouldn't be crazy. So, yes, attitude, concerns, whatever you want to characterize that as, to take that, to have that in the fourth round, it's 100% a kind of gamble I would take. Okay, the more I listen to evaluators over and over again, and I, I may have uh, put some funny words together when I was saying that, yesterday Mm. you hear evaluators talk about how much the players that they drafted love football they all love football and because i i I don't i don't know if it's an edge around the nfl if everybody's looking for the guys who love football because it seems like 90 percent of them really love ball right they love it so the guys who drop is it it's not injuries or it's probably just they don't love ball enough or the, the perception is that they don't, right? Like, that's why a guy like Dewan Jones, like, the evaluator can't go to the podium and say, we drafted Dewan Jones, he loves football. Yeah, okay, so listen. If they, got to, if they came to that conclusion. It sounds dumb, right? And in a lot of cases, it is. So when, you, when a guy like Trevor Lawrence, when you're talking, oh, does he really love ball enough? Who cares? Like, Trevor Lawrence right now, A, is amazing, and B, has already shown, like, the work ethic that you're looking for, at which point if the, his passion in life is actually um, cross-stitch, who gives a crap? Like, it does, it's not impacting your life or his life right now, so it's utterly irrelevant information. And therefore, you know, does he really love football is a completely pointless line of thought. Now, where it's different, I think, is for when you have a guy like Dewan Jones, who is 375 pounds at the Combine, and then weigh, doesn't refuses to weigh in at his pro day, but is allegedly visibly heavier by up to 20 pounds if you're listening to people, right? Now you have a guy where his actual motivation for this job is, is actually quite a relevant piece of information. If he doesn't really want to be good at this, which is being used like the, the we're using this sort of interchangeably, does he love football equals does he actually want to work hard at this job? For him, I think it's a much bigger question because now if he doesn't, is he just going to eat his way out of the league and we're going to be a 420-pound dude by week three and by week 12, we're like, this just doesn't work. I got to get rid of this guy. So it's always phrased in this stupid fashion of like, oh, he doesn't love football. But really what we're trying to answer here is, does he care enough to actually try and be good at this? Because if he doesn't, there's no point in me drafting him because it's not going to work. I, I think that's really fair. I mean, I, I joke about it because I, I don't – with the way it's cited all the time is like every team feels like they've got this advantage. Right. Like, look, we've got the – we only draft people that are going to be Chicago Bears, so, Detroit Lions, or whatever. We're going to draft our guys, our character guys, but every team is literally doing that. Right. But so I, in yeah, isolation, 
the piece of information that Dewan Jones, apparently his first dream was to play in the NBA is irrelevant. It's stupid. It sounds ridiculous. But if teams are using that and saying, well, this is his fallback option. This is simply demonstrative of what else I'm seeing that he doesn't actually want to do this, that this is not what he's going to work towards for the rest of his life. It's potentially like the it's potentially a data point in this pattern of behavior that is leading teams to suspect that this guy is actually going to crap out of the league like very quickly and not realize this first round potential that he has yeah and so i'm good taking that risk in the fourth certainly worth taking that risk in the fourth especially where who the heck knows on all those reports and all that stuff yes so what does that even look like i think there's a chance if he does have his head on straight and he's good he could take over for Jedrick Wills at left tackle next year. Yeah. Or even compete for left tackle. I would I would compete him at like because you got Jack Conklin I mean, at right tackle. I think Conklin's gonna be on the roster. I don't think they're getting rid of him. Conklin's also had a long injury history. He's had himself. injuries. Like I think yeah. if Dewan Jones gets his stuff together, he's a viable option at either tackle spot in the future for the Browns. So I, get him in the mix. If if both tackles are healthy, get Dewan Jones playing a little tight end. Right away, you get a little tight, tight end. end. Yes. Juan Jones. Well, just extra you, extra block is six man O line. Blocking for Nick Chubb with Deshaun Watson in the backfield. We got some creativity here. Uh huh. I love it. Let I'm not letting him run routes or anything like that. Oh, I thought that but was But he's a better going. he's a better blocker than Jordan Akins and David Njoku, who they have an actual tight end. I now want to see him run a corner right in the end zone. Yeah, maybe we'll get him. Six eight, two hundred and seventy or three hundred and seventy five. I'll pounds. teach you to not work out, run a corner. Mm hmm I'll see you move. We'll get some uh Get some uh, NGS times. They'll just on use them. that as a. They'll use that as a way of getting them to do wind sprints without getting them to do wind sprints. Yes. You know. Yeah. So we're not going to punish you with extra like cardio work. Having said that, we're going to install end. you in our tight end package where yeah. you're going to have to run a corner or a drag route across the back of the end zone. We'll we'll practice that a few times during the week. You know.